Hey, it's Dr. Clark again with another multivariable calculus video. This time we're learning about Stokes' theorem. Let's jump into it. So Stokes' theorem is pretty cool. It's very similar to Green's theorem. It's just a slight upgrade of Green's theorem. You're going to see exactly what we're talking about in a minute. Um, the thing about surface integrals is there's actually three kinds of surface integrals. So the first kind is where you have a surface, then you have a function, maybe it's like the density of a thin sheet, right? A thin surface, and then if you integrate that density, you get the mass of the surface. Or if you put one in here, you get the surface area. So that's one type of surface integral. You have a function, you're integrating it on a surface. The way you would answer a question like this is to do the surface integral. Um, the second type, is a, uh, a circulation problem, okay? So you have a surface, there's a vector field acting on that surface, and you're looking at the curl of that vector field. So that's telling you how is that vector field, you know, swirling around. It's the curl of the vector field tells you about sort of circulation. You dot that with the normal vector. Well, once you do a dot product, you get a quantity, of course. And so once you've dotted that with the normal vector, uh, that gives you a quantity, and then you're integrating up all those circulations. And what's going to happen is Stokes' theorem is going to enable us to get out of doing this surface integral by swapping it out using Stokes' theorem, and you'll see that in a second. Uh, the third thing that could happen, instead of looking at the curl dotted with n, you could take just the vector field dotted with n. That's going to give you the flux, okay? And if you have a flux integral like this on a surface, then you can use the divergence theorem, and that's coming in a later video. So we'll see that. Today we're going to focus on this one, Stokes' theorem, surface integrals where you're integrating the curl dotted with n. Okay? And so what you want to imagine is you've got yourself a surface like this, and everywhere is some vector field pointing, the wind is blowing or something like that, right? And you want to know how much is it sort of swirling around inside of this surface, okay? So if you take the curl of the vector field, that quantifies how much swirling around is happening. When you dot it with the normal vector to the surface, that quantifies how much circulation is happening inside. But what Stokes' theorem says is, well, if you think about, take a point here, it's swirling around a little bit. Then take the next point, it's swirling around there. Well, if it swirls up here and then it swirls down there, they cancel out. And the only time it doesn't cancel out is when you're down here, then it swirls around and that accumulates along the boundary right there. And so if you add up all of the circulations on the inside, it actually equals the net circulation around the outside. So you can hear it, see this little guy kind of walking around the outside of, there's a curve that's bounding the surface, right? So you've got some surface here, but it's cur it's got a curvular boundary. And so that's what this Stokes theorem actually says. So this of course is the curl of the vector field dotted with N. So that quantifies how much circulation is happening. Add that up for the whole surface. That's the same as if you just did the circulation around the boundary. Remember that f dot dr notation or f dot t ds is another way to write this. Um, that's a circulation. So this is saying the circulation around the boundary is equal to the net circulation inside the surface. It's just like Green's theorem. Uh, we had a Green theorem. The only difference is when we did Green theorem, it was a region, so the surface was flat. So Green's theorem is just an example of Stokes' theorem where the surface is a flat region. Of course, Green's theorem, we had the circulation and the flux version, so I'd be talking about the circulation version of Green's theorem. But remember, we ended up with the curl dotted with K for Green's theorem because, well, if it was a flat surface, then K was the unit normal vector. So it's essentially exactly that. The point is that N is pointing up, upward or outward. Um, we generally talk about up equaling out, but then that's assuming you've got an oriented surface, okay? So um, that's it, really. It's just saying you can get out of doing these circulation integrals on a surface by using um, 
just the circulation around the outside. We'll do a couple examples in the next video and you'll see how to do it actually mathematically. Uh, just one last tiny little item here, curl and conservative vector fields. We've been talking about conservative vector fields. That's one which has a potential function. We learned before that if you had a potential function and therefore a conservative vector field, then the curl was zero. It's actually if and only if. If the curl is zero, it's guaranteed to be conservative. If it's conservative, it's guaranteed to have a curl of the zero vector. So those things go if and only if, which is kind of a nice thing. Okay, um, so hopefully that's good for you in terms of getting the idea of what Stokes' theorem is talking about. And then in the next video, we'll do a couple of examples.